Good morning, everyone. I am Melanie Youngsma, publisher of the Lansing Journal, here with managing editor Josh Bootsma. Hello, everybody. And today we have a theme for the video. We do. Today's theme is, where do story ideas come from? And Josh and I spent a few minutes discussing this to sort of look organized for this video. Right. <laughs> and story ideas come from all over the place, but we tried to categorize them and give some examples of some of the stories that we have published or that we're working on because they came because those ideas came from somewhere in the community. Right. I mean, you and I live in Lansing and it's really just they come from everywhere. Right. We're just going to touch on just a few uh, sources of where story ideas come from today. Yeah, one of the first ideas we want to talk about is just uh, being involved in events in the community. I was thinking specifically of chamber events mm. because we have a story publishing on Saturday evening or Saturday night that is the result of interactions at a chamber event. Mm -hmm. Now this happened last year. Um, I think the chamber wine walk was in October last year. Mm. And I was participating in that wine walk mm -hmm. along with a Lansing Journal reader, Karen Cox. And we were coming out of Every Good Gift, a little store on River Road. And Every Good Gift is right across the street from Subway. And if you look at the subway building across Ridge Road, you can see another building popping its roof up above yeah. the subway. So Karen asked, what is that building? Do you know anything about that building? I didn't know anything about that building. Yeah. And I didn't really know where to find out about that building. But soon after that, we started working with Marlene Cook. And she's a local historian, and she has some journalism background, and she loves research. So you may have read her story about the Lansing, the fire at right. uh, First Church in Lansing. Right. We published that in January. And her February story is going to be about that house behind Subway. So that is publishing Saturday night. Readers will get it in their email on Sunday morning. And uh, thank you, Karen Cox, and thank you to the Chamber for this wine walk. And it all came together. Thank you, Marlene. She is a great historian and researcher. Mm. She put a lot of hours into finding out about this house, which is really a significant part of Lansing history. Yeah. Josh, you've got some good drone photos of the house. Yeah. And it's really amazing. I was amazed when I saw your photos. It's, it's amazing what happened to this house. Yeah, it's just in the middle of us. It just it, it's a very residential looking house popping up out of just a sea of commercial area. Yeah. So yeah, it was fascinating. So look for that in your email on Sunday morning. In that same vein with the chamber, you and I were both at a chamber meeting just recently. There was a chamber right. after hours this right. week, um, and you and I always enjoy going to those because you get to meet. Um, business owners, both longtime business owners who maybe have some news to share about how their business is, do, what new things they're doing, uh, how they're progressing, how business is. And there are also new business owners that are coming to town um, that we don't know about, that we can meet at those meetings. Right. So so you met some new people. I met some new people. I met uh, Jorge from Sinorama, which is um, by LA Fitness, just north of the highway on Torrance. Um, that, that Sinorama has been there for a while, but he's the new owner now of that location. And he's just sharing some of uh, some of what it takes to take over that business and what his hopes and goals are for that business. And yeah. hopefully there will be some news, some sort of grand opening or something that we'll be able to cover uh, in the coming weeks or months. And uh, Karen Trimuel, one of our other writers, was at that business after hours too. She spent some time talking to the South Chicago Parents and Friends, I think. It's a group uh, that helps families with special needs kids autism and other other things mm -hmm. so she spent a lot of time talking to them she wants to do a story about them and uh, we want her to do that so yeah look for that coming up all of that happened within the space of a couple hours at this chamber business after hours right just being out in the town with other people who are in the town naturally is going to result in interesting conversations about this town we exactly. found that time and time again yeah so beyond local events, uh, you and I and 
some of our writers are attending meetings regularly. These are you know public meetings around town for school board, uh, village board, uh, other other things, and so that's us actively going out acknowledging that there's a decision-making body that is important in Lansing that will make decisions that affect other people. We recognize that. We want to be there to report on what's, what's going on. Right, and those are easy to schedule because those meetings happen right. regularly. They're on a regular schedule. Right. And so we can assign people to go to those meetings. You and I go to the village board meetings, and uh, we spend quite a bit of time after the village board meets talking about what they just talked about. Right. And what should be news, what we should wait with, what we need to publish right away. Hmm. Um, and I think people don't realize what a long process right. things take sometimes. Right. Um, I'm thinking about One Trick Pony. Yeah. They have been at a couple of board meetings, and we reported earlier that they were going to be opening on Ridge Road, and that was the plan. Yeah. Now the plan has changed. And so Mark Kokel was at just this past week's board meeting right. giving people an update. And so you and I talked about should we should we publish that update or wait until that's officially approved before we report on it. So there's a lot of different factors that go into not just a story idea but the timing of publishing an idea that we get at a meeting. Uh, sometimes we get story ideas from Facebook. If mm -hmm. a lot of people are are wondering about something, then it's probably worth reporting on. Yeah. So that's another source of story ideas. Right. And then as we mentioned earlier, another good source is you and I just living in this community. As we drive around, you have a dog, as you walk around <laughs> multiple times per day, <laughs> right. seeing, uh, seeing how things are changing. Just noticing things. Just noticing, exactly. And if, if you or I are asking a question about why something is happening or why something is the way it is, likely our readers are as well. Right. And not everything leads to a story. Right. Um, this past week, I've been walking around with the dog, and of course, shoveling is on my mind. Yeah. And there are some stretches where there is no sidewalk. Yeah. And so it's difficult to, to walk. And so I just wondered, is there a shoveling ordinance in Lansing? Mm. And you did some research and found some language in the municipal code that's a little hard to interpret. And... We still don't have the answer to that question. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth a story or not, but it's something I was wondering while walking around Lansing. Right. We're also part of an online group, and that's where we got the idea to publish daily weather reports. This week, we also invited readers to submit photos about yeah. weather in Lansing. Right. So we got a couple of responses to that request already. Some cute photos. Yes. Kids with snowmen and a little baby, Delilah, I think her name was, in a snowdrift. So we love that. We want to see more of those photos. Josh and I have a million photos of Lansing, of weather. We can use our own photos. But it's more fun when you guys participate and submit us other photos. Photos that we don't have. Photos from other parts of Lansing that we haven't been to yet. Yeah. So we also get people who email you directly, me directly, info at the Lansing Journal directly. We also have an online form where you can fill out just briefly what idea you have, and then you have to input your email so we can get in touch with you afterwards. Um, yeah, so people who have ideas, and it, it could be an idea like this event is happening, wanted to make sure you knew about it, mm -hmm. or a question. Why is this this way in town? I noticed this was happening. Do you know what that's about? Those are different types of story tips but they are both equally valid, and we appreciate them both. So those are some of the benefits of having a local community newspaper. You have local people in your community finding things out, hearing people's questions, accepting people's questions, and then publishing about them. Right. And we enjoy that. Right. And Lansing is a large community. Melanie and I are two people. We are connected to our network, but our network does not cover all of Lansing either. So please... If you have any inkling of a good story idea, something that you find interesting that you care about, let us know. We would love to hear about it. We want you to be in our network, too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for uh, the story ideas you have submitted and the photos you have submitted, um, the critique you have submitted. Yeah. The, we, we depend on those ideas. We're a community newspaper. We need to hear from our community. 
So that is, uh, that's just a little sampling of where we get story ideas from and the process of publishing those stories. So with that in mind, we hope you enjoy uh, reading next week's stories and please submit any story tips that you have to us in any way that you see fit. Thank you and have a good week, everybody.